you were in trouble. I was in trouble. There was a lot of anger. Um, my brother was, because of his sickness, uh, he got a, a lot of uh, necessary pampering. And uh, uh, they were always worried about Falcon. I kind of felt a little left out. My brother, believe it or not, had beautiful flaming red hair. I mean, we didn't look, we the same size and weight, but he had brown eyes and flaming red hair, and he had this, you know, uh, rare uh, terminal disease. And I, I really wanted my parents' attention. I couldn't get it, so I was angry. And Dad's drinking sometimes made him lash out, and I was picking up on that. And uh, so I'd get into trouble. I'd get into fights and and uh, get kicked out of school. So sometimes I went from school to school because of bad behavior, and sometimes because of just moving. And you ran away. How old were you when you ran away for the first time? Uh, first time I was 13. Did you actually make it? I mean, you live away from home? Uh, well, and we made it for a while. Uh, I ran away with a friend in New York City. And uh, I, I not only went to military school in California, I went to New York Military Academy in New York City, which is the elementary school of West Point. Excellent school. And I ran away. I knew where the hills were up there. And so this friend and I, we went up into the hills there. We got arrested or got caught by the police. And they were taking us by, uh, they flew us back to New York to get picked up by our parents. We escaped from the airplane and got a train and tried to go to Texas or Mexico. And we got picked up by other police along the way. We looked like runaways. And uh, at that point, my mother said, you know, I just can't handle you anymore. She sent me back to live with my father. And, and he I was sent in you where? Juvenile hall. Well, uh, dad sent me to a Catholic school for a while. And, um, I went to another school that was on a boat, um, probably getting ahead of the story a little bit. I got into a lot of trouble at home, had stepmother, stepbrother, and, and uh, there was a lot of fighting, not a lot of happiness in the home. And uh, it got so bad that Dad had a hotel he owned, and he said, look, you can't live at home, you're living at the hotel. And you were in the hotel by yourself? Dad owned a hotel by the airport. Oh, there, I wasn't by myself. but. Yeah, the family was at home on the mansion, and my stepmother said, either he goes or I go. Dad, my mother said, I can't take him. So he said, all right, you're staying at the hotel. It's called the Runway Inn at the airport. And finally, that's where I just ran away for the last time. Doug, is there any truth to this caveman business? Did you really live in a cave? I did. Um i got to find out about that, but we'll be back in just a moment. I'm talking to Doug Batchelor, the richest caveman. When I was a kid, the little green men were Martians, but today everybody says they want to go green. Well, I, I wonder if everybody does, but it would be good for us to go green because it means we would have respect for the environment. There are many, many ways that people can have respect for the environment, from using uh, efficient uh, light bulbs, perhaps even to being a vegetarian like myself, where you use less earth to actually get a, a given amount of protein. And also there's the reduction in the methane production if you're a vegetarian. But an interesting way would be to probably consider using your municipal water supply as your supply of water. Just think about it. The millions and millions of plastic bottles that are used to carry around that water that we all drink. And that water, in many cases, just comes from the municipal supply, but it's being filtered. So what about filtering your own? Get one and put it on your tap. You could save a lot of energy. Since vegetarians are always concerned about protein, people have begun manufacturing what they call meat analogs. Usually these are derived from soybeans, and the soy protein is what we call texturized to make it look and maybe be flavored like a meat. There's a problem with meat analogs, though. You see, in order to make the soy taste good, or even make it taste like meat, they have to add a lot of things. Salt is one of the big problems. Now, here I have a can, and I would suggest I'm not going to talk about which one it is, but when I look at this, it's got 300 and 10 milligrams of sodium per serving, which is 13% of your daily requirements. Could be a problem. Now, I have another one here, and this has only got 130. 
So the thing for you to do is to read the labels, and that way you'll protect your family. I'm talking to Doug Batchelor, the richest caveman, according to his book. You ran away from home a lot of times. The first time you ran away, you stole some money from your mother. How yes. much? Well, I one day was just looking for loose change to buy something, and I discovered that my mother actually hid her spare cash in the pocket of one of her coats she never wore, and I found hundreds of dollars. So when I finally ran away, I knew where there was a roll of cash, and it was $300, which was significant. Uh, that kept you going for ago. a while. Yeah, it uh, subsidized the tent and the sleeping bags and things that my buddy and I needed. Is that the trip you were arrested? That was the first uh, runaway excursion at 13 when we were arrested and put in a juvenile uh, center. Arrested for? Um, running away, a runaway minor. I don't know what the classification was for it, but uh, I had also done some stealing in connection with that. And indecent exposure. Uh, that came later. I see. <laughs> but yes, I, I've been arrested for that as well. How come? Well, uh, one of the times, uh, the second out of three times I ran away, uh, I was uh, skinny dipping at the beach in Miami. And uh, the, the police uh, uh, notified us that was not allowed in Miami Beach. And I, I was see. arrested. Uh, this is one of about seven times I've been in jail not visiting people on, on my own. And uh, uh, I was so embarrassed. I mean, you know, it's okay. What are you in for? Murder, thieving. What are you in for? Skinny dipping. And it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I so I, I didn't tell them what my real name was, and I stayed in the Dade, Dade County Juvenile Detention Center, which is a very tough place. And I stayed there for a week and never told them who I was. They figured it out eventually, and my dad came to pick me up. And he kept you in one of his hotels for a while, and eventually you said, enough of this, too. I thought, you know, why sneak off? I should just, you know, address him like a man and say, you know, Dad, we're not getting along. Um, I, you know, I just didn't fit into the family. Everyone knew I was sort of the black sheep. Um, I wasn't doing well in school. I, I never planned on working for him because we were a lot alike, and we just couldn't get along. And I said, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to do my own thing. And he said, look, I can't handcuff you. I think you're making a big mistake. You know, here I've built up this business. Your brother's sick. You could work for me. You could have everything money can buy. You're making a big mistake. You need an education. And I said, well, I, I've got to go find out for myself. So uh, we had a very uh, uh, difficult farewell. And uh, he said, look, I'm not helping you. And so I took off hitchhiking with whatever money I could get from selling things to my brother. And um, I wanted to hitchhike back to Southern California to uh, some caves I had found. Uh, but before I did that, I, I wanted to go up to Boston and see if I could make some money. So I took off and I, I went up to Boston. I was 16 years old now. And I really got into a lot of trouble. Uh, I now was thoroughly versed in drinking and drugs. I learned about drinking from Dad because he had a bar in the house and I could drink whatever I wanted. And he never knew it was missing because the butler would always replace the alcohol. And I learned about the drugs largely from my mother. And uh, uh, she had friends that were always smuggling her hashish and, and uh, pot and things from Turkey. And in show business, there's a lot of hallucinogenics. And LSD was the drug of choice back then. And so when I was living on the streets in Boston, um, I was a thief. Uh, I had started breaking into homes even when I lived with my dad. It was kind of surprising because I was friends with people like uh, Hoover Vacuum Cleaner, uh, the, the heir, their kids, Amy Firestone I dated, who her family owned Firestone Tires. And so these kids were all doing drugs together. I hope none of my, my sharing this 35 years later. And um, uh, getting into trouble. And we would start breaking into other homes just for the thrill of it. I mean, we didn't need the money, but it was just the adventure, the rebellion, the thrill. With all of that money, you were busy stealing. Yeah, we were, we were stealing from the other millionaires on this island. And just to say we did it, you know, we'd steal a tennis racket, a radio. But now when I was in Boston, and I'm really on my own, I, I began to do it in, in sincerity. I was stealing cars and, and breaking into homes and selling things. And um, Did you have an accomplice? 